Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Nitej and in this video, I'm going to talk about the strategy design pattern, its uses and how to implement this pattern in C# -sharp programming language. So, strategy pattern is one of the behavioral design patterns which we can use and the advantage of a strategy pattern is that our client code is not tightly coupled with a single algorithm or a single method to do something or to solve a problem. This means that we can essentially have a number of different objects with methods to do something but the interface of all those objects is going to be same. They are going to expose the same methods and properties for the client code to use. The internal representation of all those objects however needs to be different. You must be thinking why do we need a number of different algorithms to serve a single purpose? The answer to that question is that when we do not know under what circumstances the client code is running or what is the internal state of the system when we need to do something, then we must choose the algorithm which is best suited for that system's state. I know this may be hard to understand at first, but let me give you a couple of examples. If you have been a web developer, then you must know that when browser APIs were not standardized, then every application needed to execute the code which is supported by the browser in which the app is running. For example, asynchronous network requests. jQuery was created for this exact need to be able to select a piece of code to execute depending on the browser which is running it. Another example could be authentication. A user either logins using an email and a password or by using a mobile phone number and one-time password sent on their phone. These are the choices which the system needs to make at runtime based on the input parameters. That's where the strategy pattern comes in. So in essence, a strategy pattern is simply a collection of strategies. The client code selects one of those strategies depending on the runtime state and the input parameters. Alright, now let's see a simple code example to understand how the strategy pattern can be implemented in its very basic form. So this is a c -sharp console application. In this example, we are going to create a strategy classes to make asynchronous network requests from a browser. As of now, fetch API can be used to make async calls. But before that, we had to rely upon the XML HTTP request object in older browsers. Our code will use the appropriate strategy based on the browser in which the web application is running. Alright, so the first thing that we need to do is to create an interface and this is going to be called as I async request strategy. This interface is going to be the binding contract for all of the strategy classes which we are going to create and also the client code is going to use this interface to switch between different strategies. This interface can have a single method which can be called as send request and as the name implies this can be used to send the asynchronous requests to the network and this can also have an argument of type string which can be called as URL. Also this method is going to return an object which can be the response of the request which we will make. So we can set its type as async response and obviously we will have to create a type for this async response. So we can do that by creating a new class with this name. So class async response and this class can have a single property and we can have its type as an object and we can simply call it as response this can be a property with its own getter and setters all right so the interface has been created and now it's time to create the concrete strategy classes so as i have already told you we need to create the strategy classes for the two ways in which we can make async network calls the first one is going to be the xml http request and the second one is going to be for the fetch api so let's first take on the xml http request or in short it can be called as xhr so we can create a class and we can call it as xml http request api and this can be implemented from the iasync request strategy interface we will need to provide the implementation details of this send request method so let's just do that too in this method first we are going to create an object of the type async response so we are not actually going to send any of the asynchronous request to this network location 
So what we will do is we will simply write something to the console to let us know that this object is being used. So we can write a simple message using console dot write line and the message could be sent async network request using let's use the short form xhr and finally we can simply return this async response object and we also need to make this method public to be able to satisfy the contract of this interface which we are using for this class all right so the xml http request api class has been finished and now we need to create the concrete strategy for the fetch api we just need to change the message which we are printing on the console from this send request method and this will tell us that this is the fetch api class method which is being executed so let's just rename this xhr to fetch api now we are going to create a class for a web application in which we are going to use these strategies and we are essentially going to switch between these strategies depending on the browser in which the web application is running so for the web application let's create a new class and let's just call it web application now before we continue to further create this class first we are going to need an interface which is going to be called as browser type and we will simply use this interface to identify the type of browser for which this application needs to be created and run so for now let's just have two types of browsers the first one can be internet explorer and the other one can be google chrome now in this web application class first we need to create a private field for the browser type in which this application needs to run and this can be created like this private browser type and then browser type now we need to create a constructor which is going to accept the type of the browser as an argument and then we are going to use this argument value to set this private fields value so let's just do that i'm going to copy this right from over here and then remove the underscore and then simply set the value of browser type private field with this argument next let's just create a single method to make the async call to the network location we can do that by creating a new method and we can call it as public async response this is going to return the object of type async response and then we can name it as send async request to server and then it can have the argument of the um, of the network url to which the request needs to be sent now in this method first we need to create a field of the type this async request strategy interface so we need to do that because we need to switch between different strategies and the only way in which we can do that is by using an interface now let's first create the async response object and we can for now initialize it with a null and then let's also return it in the end so return async response now it's time to switch between the appropriate strategy depending on the browser in which this web application is running we can do that by simply writing a switch block and then inside it we can use the value of this private browser type so if the browser type is internet explorer then we need to use the strategy xml http request because let's say fetch api is not supported in ie or internet explorer although i think it is by now but let's just assume that we are dealing with an older version of internet explorer which still doesn't support the fetch api so we will need to use the xhr over here and let's also have the case for the chrome browser in which we can use the fetch api because it supports it what we are going to do is we are simply going to create a new object of type xml http request api over here and for the chrome browser we are going to create a new object of type fetch api so after we have set the reference of the required strategy object within this async request strategy interface type under these different case statements 
all we need to do is to simply call the async request strategies send request method and we will also need to send in this url as an argument over here and because this method is going to return the response and that response will be returned from this send request method call so we can simply return from over here too and we can just copy and paste this statement for the chrome browser type case too so that is all that we need to do for this web application class to switch between the required strategy object depending on the browser in which this web application is running this method's code can be further improved but for now let's just go with it now it's time to create a new web application object by providing a browser type in which we want this application to run and for that we can simply create a new object which can be called as web application and we can use its constructor to create the object and for now let's just use the browser as chrome now let's just call web applications send async request to server method and we can provide a url over here so let's just provide the url of google.com so www.google.com and that's pretty much it now it's time to build the code and run this application you can see that the message which is being printed over here is send async request using fetch api this is because this web application object is selecting the fetch api strategy based on the browser in which this application is running and that is chrome browser now let's see what will happen when we will initialize this web application using internet explorer in that situation the xml http request strategy should be selected to make the async network request call and now the message which is being printed is a sent async network request using xhr and that is because the browser type is internet explorer so the xhr strategy is being selected from within this web applications send async request to server method so that was a pretty basic and easy to understand example about how to create strategies and how to select them depending on the state of the system and the input parameters now this strategy design pattern can be implemented in a number of different ways depending on the project requirements so i would like to advise you not to think that this can be done in only a specific way and that was all there is to learn about the strategy pattern in this video if you have any question then feel free to use the comments area thank you so much for watching this video i'm nitej and i will hopefully see you soon till then stay safe and take care of yourselves